Here we are at my kitchen. Well, kind of, sort of. It's my kitchen away from home as I love to cook at home. Love to cook here for you as well. Not doing much cooking today, though. As you can see, I don't have my big pots and pans out like I have in the past. Because in the past, I've been kind of doing some main course meals. Now, last week for you, I did uh, an orange ginger with some soy sauce. Uh, mix that with uh, some jasmine rice and then put some shrimp in there as well. Raw shrimp is the key on that one because the cooked shrimp, if you get them any more warmer, they cook in a pan for quite a while, they actually start getting kind of chewy, things of that nature. So raw shrimp was the key on this one. Not too many keys on this one. This is an appetizer. I think it's a really good summer appetizer and really overall fairly healthy. I mean, yes, we've got the bread here. Yes, we've got some oil, but it's an olive oil. It's a very healthy oil, if you will. And you can go with almost any kind of bread that you want to. Now, this is what is called an olive tapenade. Tapenade, uh, I think, has roots, origins of the word caper. Now, I don't have any capers here today. Feel free to throw some capers in. Again, this recipe, you can just vary it up almost any way you want to. There's not one certain recipe with this one. So what I have here in my bowls right now. A very healthy oil. This is olive oil right here. Uh, I wouldn't go canola because I want, if we're keeping with the olives, because an olive tepanade, I'd rather keep with the olive oil itself. Then I have just some green olives here. You can get the ones with pimentos inside, or you can uh, not get the ones with pimentos inside. That's up to you. But the key here is make sure the olive, of course, is pitted. You don't want to get an olive that's not pitted. Then I have some black olives here, too. And there are some recipes that go with three olives, green, black, and the Clamato olives. Again, this is all varying it up. Just some fresh lemon juice as well, not much of that, and then some minced garlic. And if you want to roast your garlic, that would probably be good as well. I'm going to put a little onion in mine here. I've got my onion here. I'm going to chop it up here fresh in just a moment. And then a very small, I'm not going to put the whole thing in there, but a very small uh, red bell pepper. And then I have my... Uh, uh, pepper right here. Not going to put much pepper in it, but I, these are the corn peppers or the pepper. Uh, I like to make sure that those are freshly done. So that's why I have my pepper mill here with me. So what we're going to do is we're not going to start with the olive oil just yet. We're going to leave that in this container for just a moment, but everything else really gets to go ahead and just put it inside your food chopper. Now, what I've done here is you're going to see how much one-off this is going to make. Uh, I have 20 of olives of both kinds. I actually, yes, counted all my olives out. So I have 20 of the black olives, 20 of the green olives. I'm going to go ahead also and put in my minced garlic. Again, if you want to also roast your garlic too in the pan, after it's minced, that would be just fine. And then I like to make sure that I try to keep my vegetables as fresh as possible before I actually cook with them. So I do have my onion here, and I'm going to get just a little bit of onion. This is an olive spread, so you don't want to overpower it with the peppers and you know the, the black pepper here or your onion to your taste. If you'd like to do that, by all means, go ahead. But again, remember, this is an olive spread, so it's going to have that olive taste to it, but then hints, if you will, of your other ingredients. So it's going to give this a couple... Slices right there. That's all we're going to eat. In fact, that was probably too much right there. Now, since the onions like to stick together, I'm going to separate my onions. So you're going to use a food processor. Um, some people actually prefer to also just cut these up with a knife. Instead, I've got my bread knife here, and then finally dice them up, and then they do that as well. Uh, instead of doing it more like a puree, to me this is quicker, easier. That's what I like to do and show you here is how to make something quick and easy. So I'm going to go ahead and put it inside my food chopper here, but I'm not going to let it completely get chopped up just yet. I just want to give it a couple of beats. Then what I'm going to do is use my spatula, because you see it kind of builds up on the side. Take my spatula and push everything back down in there. This is what I'm going to start adding my olive oil into this mixture. And just put a little bit in, because you don't want to get it too oily. And then once you get that in there, that's when you really then begin to let it get finely pureed. So stick it back in there some more. Give it a good stir, take everything down off the side once again. We're getting more and more chopped up as we do this. Now, I also have a bread here. Feel free to use any kind of bread that you want to. And also, kind of better too, if you have that bread toasted as well, you can cut it up into small, fine pieces. Probably no more than bigger than that right there. Good little bite sizes. And then what I have here is a tepanade. It's all a done deal. All you just take your spatula, kind of stir it around. I don't think I need any more olive oil. And then you just get these little cups here and serve it. 
just as an appetizer, just like that. Very easy recipe. This will be on my Facebook page later on today. Olive tepanade looks really healthy, and I tell you what, it tastes really good. Ron's got your forecast as I enjoy my tepanade.